it possible to draw a parallel between these projections that happen because of the Jesus um, belief and the soulmate uh, issue? Like, um, is it for me like I feel that the um, that if I I have to feel the soulmate, that to believe somebody is my soulmate is is, is irrelevant really, mm -hmm. and is it not the same then? To, because because a soulmate is really like a, a love union, so that has to be felt. Mm -hmm. Totally. And and uh, is it not the same then with um, with uh, you know the Jesus thing that you mean? Yeah. Um, that whether someone believes in Jesus or they do not believe it is in the end irrelevant. Exactly. What matters is if they can feel yeah. your Jesus ness or the, the qualities of Jesus in you. Yeah. And honestly, what I'm also learning over the last uh, probably three months in particular is that I need to give up the need for anything from anyone. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very huge statement when you think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It means that you're going to give up the need for somebody to treat you nicely. You're going to give mm -hmm. up the need for somebody to treat you like they love you. You're going to give up the need for somebody to want you or desire you. You're going to give up the need to do any of those understand things. Understand you. Understand you. You're going to give up the need for someone to understand you. You're going to give up the need for someone to be loving to you. All of those needs eventually will all disappear because love only gives. Uh, love doesn't demand something in return. And so one of the huge uh, things that I'm working through at the moment is how I've set up demands from my soulmate before I even met her. Mm. One of the demands that I had from my soulmate before I met her was I wanted her to love me. Uh, I wanted her to desire me. I wanted her to have these feelings of wanting to open up her heart to me. And I wanted to have these feelings of, you know, desiring to be open with me. And all of those things are projections of what I was wanting from her. And they are unloving projections that I need to now own and I need to work my way through. And so that has been really confronting as well. Actually loving somebody with all my heart and yet not feeling like I need... I don't even have a feeling within me at some point in the future because it's not how it is now. I don't have a feeling within me that I need anything in return from her. Am I understanding of love? I mean, perhaps it's a limited one who said love is about give and take and the cycle is a... No. That's just a new age. Yeah, yeah. Love, love is not about give and take. Does God take from you? <coughs> no. no. It's, uh, and that's why in the first century said there's more happiness in giving than there is in receiving. And, and every celestial spirit is in a state where they give love, but, but particularly from people on earth, very rarely receive it. And yet they can continue giving love. And, uh, you know, one thing that I've often connected with myself with the soulmate issue is there, there have been soulmates where the soulmates in... One soulmate part, uh, half is in the celestial spheres and the other half is in the first sphere in the hills, not receiving any love at all from... <coughs> and not giving any love at all to the soulmate. And yet that soulmate is in complete bliss and happiness. And then I'm looking at my own relationship saying, I'm not in complete bliss. <laughs> I'm badly needy. Like, I need my soulmate to love me, you know. And so what I've got to do then is go, why am I needing that? What's going on within me that causes me to have these huge needs for her to love me? What, what's happening inside of myself? What's the feeling I'm avoiding? And I'll show you some of the things that I've written. They're every little person I've put. My soulmate won't like seeing this video if she sees it. Because she doesn't like anything private being public. So my apologies to my soulmate. But it's important. So one other thing is my soulmate did say to me that I need to be open and more open and honest about my emotions. Yes. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. And so, yeah, um, here's one. This was on the 7th of June. Um, I'm getting major projections of anger and fear from Mary. Major rejection. Feels like she wants nothing to do with me at all. I feel like we were overseas and I feel like going home without her. I feel like she hates me and hates me being alive. I feel like if I died, she'd be happier. So the expectation I have is that Mary longs for me like I do her. Right? 
the reality is that Mary dislikes me in her life because of the emotions that are getting triggered within her and she wants to avoid me. And what am I avoiding? I'm avoiding the feelings of being rejected by my soulmate. I'm avoiding feeling that my soulmate hates me and would rather that I'd never been born. So, you know, that's still a big emotion for me. <laughs> But that's just what you're feeling. That's I not do. the truth. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter if it's not the truth. Mm. But you're into truth. No, 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 you don't understand. This is an emotional error yeah. that I need to get out of me. The only yeah. way I can experience an emotional error is to actually yeah. admit the truth of what mm. I'm feeling to myself. You follow me? Yeah. So I, mean, I feel right now, I feel, I know it's an error. Yeah. And I, and, but, I, but telling myself that it's not an error is not going to benefit me. What I need to do is just feel that my soulmate feels I'd rather never been born. I need to feel that, because that's an emotion in me still. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. But isn't there a, a, an emotion even deeper than that? Oh, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just risk listing a few <laughs> from my journal. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, here's a good one. I don't know if Mary will like this one, but sorry, Mary. And the day ended with a phone call to Mary in Switzerland. I was, I was in England and she was in Switzerland. And the phone call ended with Mary telling me to fuck off <laughs> and hanging up on me. She was so angry with me and most of the time I can feel her hatred. And my expectation is that Mary treats me well. And the reality is that she's not capable of treating me well because she doesn't want to fully choose all of her emotion. So she was willing to project it onto me. And I, what I'm avoiding... I'm avoiding feeling unloved, hated and rejected by my soulmate. And like, I can still feel those emotions in me even though I've been crying about them since mm. the 7th of June. Mm. So 7th of June is now what? It's five weeks. Mm. Is it as intense as it was then, the emotion? No, it's not. So it is healing. But uh, I can yeah. still feel them. Mm. It's, it's, it's interesting, it's totally different uh, feeling them by yourself than it is saying to somebody else that you... You know, so this yeah. is interesting for me too, because I don't normally <coughs> talk about my emotions very much. Yeah. You were talking before about giving and uh, give and take stuff, but the, like it's really been fully fully aware too when we're giving. Some things aren't loving when we're giving, <coughs> eh? Because I've learnt that lesson yeah. of where I thought I was always giving because I was loving. Yeah. None of it was. I wasn't loving to myself. Mm. I was over giving. Yeah. What happened there was I had I was I was in England at the time and. Uh, uh, I woke up one morning and I just had this major realisation. And soul realisations are like light bulb moments, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, just bang, you've got them. And this, this major realisation that, that every time I had a desire for something outside of myself, mm -hmm. aside from my desire for God, because God can fulfil all my desires, right? But every time I have a desire for something outside of myself that has nothing to do with God, I am setting up the possibility and the most likely possibility of my being disappointed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as soon as I do that, obviously I'm going to set up the emotional possibility of having lots of pain and hurt as well. Mm -hmm. So then I realised that I had to, the only, but I had to deal with this emotionally. I can't deal with this intellectually, right? Every time you try and deal with something intellectually, you skip over heaps of emotions. Mm -hmm. So what I had to do then was I had to work through the emotions of what I was desiring outside of myself and why. So, for example, I was desiring people to treat me justly. For example, I give my time freely to people and yet very few in the past have done the same for themselves. Most people have wanted to charge me for anything they've given me. And, I, and there's a feeling of injustice inside mm. of me about that, right? And the feeling of injustice has been created because I've set it up. I've set it up because I've actually had this desire for something outside of myself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And because I've had this desire for something outside of myself, which is for somebody else to treat me justly, I'm going to be disappointed. Now, what I've had to do emotionally is I've had to then go into the emotion of, I feel injustice. I've had to go into the injustice and actually feel the injustice in every single thing that's been unjust in my life. And given 2,000 years, that's quite a few things, right? <laughs> so I've had to work my way through those emotions and give up 
emotionally give up the need for anybody outside of myself to give me anything. Now that's a huge thing to deal with. And when you come to dealing with those kind of issues yourself, if you haven't already, you'll find that that's huge, giving up all of those kind of issues. And, uh, and the key thing to bear in mind with all of this is that God gives her love and does not expect anything in return. What can you give God? There's only one thing. Your love. That's the only thing you can give God that God doesn't already have. Because God gave you the free will to express your love. Right? So the only thing that you do not already, that God doesn't already have, that God didn't already make in you, is the love that you are able to give to God. That's the only thing that doesn't exist. And God doesn't expect it of you. If she expected it of you, she'd be highly disappointed. Because if she expected it of everyone in the universe, there's very, very few people in the universe who truly love God. And so what would be occurring? She'd be always crying. None of my children love me. <laughs> That's what she'd be feeling, wouldn't she? If she expected it. Then she wouldn't have given us free will. That's right. So... Um, so obviously, you know, in looking at God and the relationship that we have with God, we learn a lot about what we will need to give up. And so I had a lot of realizations over a period of, over these last, like in particular, last six months probably, of and particularly in meeting my soulmate, I've had a lot of these realizations that have helped me start working through all of these things. So it's been quite difficult. Twenty.